Hi everyone. Today I am talking about the topic lateral periodontal cyst. Lateral periodontal cyst is a developmental odontogenic cyst that typically occurs along the lateral root surface of a vital tooth. It is believed to arise from remnant of the dental lamina epithelium within the alveolar bone. It is a slow growing non expansile developmental odontogenic cyst that derived from one or more rest of the dental lamina containing an embryonic lining of one to three cuboidal cells and distinctive focal thickening. Lateral periodontal cyst, the name suggests that it typically occurs lateral to the root surface of a vital tooth and it is found 0.7% of the all jaw cyst. There are many theories regarding their pathogenesis. For the theory th says that the origin initially as a dentigerous cyst developing along the lateral surface of the crown and as the tooth erupt, the cyst assume a position in approximation to the lateral surface of the tooth. So in this diagram, here we can see that there is expansion of the follicle on the lateral surface of the crown of the unerupted tooth. And at this stage, when we take the radiograph, the radiograph would show the lateral dentigerous cyst is there. But when the tooth erupt in the oral cavity, the, the expanded follicle detach and it detach from the crown and it attaches to the lateral root surface of the tooth. In other picture, we can see here that the lateral periodontal cyst is formed from the reduced enamel epithelium and by dilatation of the follicle before eruption of the tooth. Whereas the gingival cyst of adult, it is a uh, so gingival cyst of adult both share the common histogenesis that is the other theory says that the origin from proliferation of rest of molasses in the periodontal ligament although the stimulus for this proliferation is unknown and the other theory says that origin simply as a primordial cyst of supernumerary tooth germ Origin from proliferation and cystic transformation of rest of dental lamina which are in post functional state and therefore have only a limited growth potential that is in accordance with usual small size of the cyst. So this theory is the most appropriate one where we can see that the post functional state of the dental lamina means the proper functioning of the dental lamina is over and when the tooth erupt uh, when the tooth is developing and it and it detaches from the dental lamina and rest in the jaw or in the gingival epithelium and these uh, remnant of epi uh, these remnant of the dental lamina rest is called cell rest of serous and this is in post functional state so the lesion is very small in size and in the post functional dental lamina rest is the most accepted one theory so, and earlier we can uh, discuss um, uh, earlier we discussed the histogenesis from post functional dental lamina rest is common for both gingival cyst of adult and uh, lateral periodontal cyst now we come on the clinical feature of the lateral periodontal cyst Usually it fifth to seven decade of the life and rare in patient less than 30 years of age. It favors the male more predominantly ratio male is to female ratio is two is to one. Now we come on the site of the lateral periodontal cyst most common adjacent to root of cuspid or bicuspid teeth. 60 to 80 percent occur in mandibular premolar canine lateral incisor area but favors premolar and canine region the most when occur in maxilla usually involve this same tooth region but favors the incisor area now the uh, site predilection uh, in this picture we can see here there is more site predilection um, among canine and the for uh, can uh, among 
premolar and canine region the 66 percent predilection between the mandibular bicuspid area and it is followed by the maxillary bicuspid area and then it is uh, followed by anterior uh, mandibular region and then it is followed by the uh, anterior maxillary region and less than one percent in cases of posteriors of the maxilla and mandible so in the other um, uh, clinical aspect we can see in the in the lesion is usually asymptomatic and it doesn't show symptoms sometimes painless expansion of bone is present rarely it perforates bone to communicate with the gingival surface and sometimes the the color of the overlying epithelium is blue whereas uh, in general the color of the uh, lesion is normal associated with vital teeth but sometimes it get confused because it is also associated with endodontically treated uh, tooth and sometimes it occurs on the extracted tooth uh, site so we get confused uh, in these cases uh, about the residual cyst and reticular cyst lateral reticular cyst in the other picture radiographic picture we can see there are uh, radiographic appearance that the well demarcated round to elongated tear drop appearance is the most common radiographic feature and rare the lesion exceeded one centimeter in size in this picture we can see here the tear drop appearance of a lateral periodontal cyst and in the other picture we can see here the cyst is present in between the pre, uh, canine and the premolar region where uh, the well uh, corticated margin esclerotic margin is seen and this esclerotic margin means the lesion is slow growing sometimes the lesion is larger and in these cases uh, uh, they causes root divergence this is the another picture of the lateral periodontal cyst and um, now we come under the differential diagnosis of the um, radiographically we can differentiate from other lesion the lateral radicular cyst lateral periodontal abscess lateral dentigerous cyst residual cyst primordial cyst globulomaxillary cyst median mandibular cyst small odontogenic keratic cyst and early ameloblastoma their radiographic appearance resembling to the lateral periodontal cyst but they in all these criteria that is a resemblance towards the lateral periodontal cyst so the histopathological confirmation is necessary to diagnose a disease now we come here uh, over the histopathological features lateral periodontal cyst are lined by thin non creatinized layer of a squamous or cuboidal epithelium usually range from 1 to 5 cell layer thickness and it resembles to reduced enamel epithelium means the cell is cuboidal and low columnar in shape and the focal nodular area of epithelial thickening is also seen and the papillary infolding of the lateral periodontal cyst wall are sometimes seen inflammatory cells may be present in the fibrous connective tissue wall in this picture we can see here the one to five cell layer thickness that resemble resemble towards the reduced enamel epithelium and now here we can see the uh, basal cell proliferation occurs in this region and uh, due to this uh, there is a, a intracellular accumulation of fluid after that uh, in lateral to this um, epi focal epithelial thickening we can see here there is convolution in the uh, epithelial plaque and that convolution give rise to the daughter cells and this is the cystic lumen and this is the fibrous connective tissue so in the other picture we can see here uh, through the diag diagrammatic representation of the lateral periodontal cyst this is the cystic lining and this is the uh, cystic lining that is uh, here the reduced enamel epithelium like cells and uh, here the basal proliferation of the um, cell get started and uh, in this uh, picture C we can see there is a pro after proliferation of basal cells intercellular accumulation of the fluid is occurred and the, mm, the, mm, the plaque is swells up after that 
the basal uh, cell proliferation slows down and there is reduce in the size of the epithelial plaque and lateral to the the, uh, the first plaque there is another uh, plaque is developing uh, and the basal proliferation cells occurs here and in the other diagram in uh, picture e we can see there is detachment of the superficial cell and it is projecting towards the cystic lumen sometimes it gets slows down and this epithelial plaque get convoluted and give to the daughter cells now we come on the other diagram and we can see here that uh, there is the uh, cystic lumen and this is the fibrous connective tissue wall and this is the focal nodular thickening of the epithelial plaque according to cr and pinborg suggested that these these thickening represented an example of odontogenic epithelium that stabilizes uh, original morphology under pathologic condition Th thickening of stomatodial ectoderm in the formation of dental lamina during early odontogenesis so now we come to another histopathological uh, diagram here the photomicrograph shows there is epithelial sloughing in the cystic lumen and this is the fibrous connective tissue wall here the hemorrhagic area we can see here and this is the epithelial slough that present in the cystic lumen in the other picture we can see here there is the glycogen rich clear cells that is present in the epithelium and these glycogen rich clear cells sometimes also present in the connective tissue wall and there is papillary infolding also present in this diagram we can see here the papillary infolding is present and the thickness of the cystic lining resembling the reduced enamel epithelium and here the focal nodular epithelial thickening and this epithelial thickening of the plaque sometimes these cells is appear as swelled or twisted or spiraling in motion and in the other histopathological picture we can see here there is a, a proliferation in the cystic lining epithelium and this is the basal cell proliferation and sometimes it get extended into the connective tissue and um, this this appearance is looks like running down from the cystic lining so um, these all are the histopathological features of the lateral periodontal cyst and now we come uh, under the differential diagnosis histologically it is differentiated uh, from gingival cyst of adult and botryoid odontogenic cyst botryoid odontogenic cyst it is the polycystic variant of the lateral periodontal cyst and gingival cyst of adult they share the common histogenesis of the lateral periodontal cyst and there is some other histochemical study is also done by Ramesan and Itchel. They demonstrated positive reactions for NADH2 and NADPH2 diaphorase glutamate dehydrogenase and lactate dehydrogenase in the epithelium while the reactions for acid and alkaline phosphatase are very weak. In the um, uh, acid phosphatase they are participate in the uh, osteoclastic activity and alkaline phosphatase they show the osteoplastic and bone formation they both show the very weak reaction in the lateral periodontal cyst whereas in case of uh, odontogenic keratocyst uh, acid phosphatase activity is very high and now come um, under the part of treatment of lateral periodontal cyst the surgical enucleation of the lesion with using a surgical curate is the treatment of choice princess thank you for all to watching this video